Hey, Josh got the cut though. Oh, I got Josh. You know, like, but like all my grades are showing, and I'm not, I'm not ready. <laughs> I, I need a cut too, man. That's I did it myself. Oh, nice. I know. I found children's cut too. Yeah, I, I did this. <laughs> okay, we're going live now. All right, guys. Uh, Ruth. Yes. Or everyone. Um, just go mute, and whenever you're gonna, you know, um, oh, okay, comment talk. or whatever, yeah, yeah just uh, take it off. True. Hi, guys. We're live. Welcome. Uh, as I said earlier, we're doing a uh, great controversy, chapter 22. Uh, prophecies fulfilled. Um, we could go ahead and start with a word of prayer if we have a volunteer to pray. Would okay. anybody like to pray? Yeah, um, okay, let's pray. My precious Father in heaven, God, we're so grateful for your word. Thank you for the Sabbath and the opportunity to still be able to fellowship and connect virtually, even though we're in several different locations. And I ask, oh, Father, that as we study what we've been learning through um, your written word as well as through the pen of inspiration, I ask, oh, Father, that you will enlighten us, that your spirit will fill us, that you will change us. Most importantly, Father, that we um, will be refreshed and drawn closer to you, Father, as a result of our dialogue um, this afternoon. And thank you so much, oh, God, for um the times that we are living in, thank you for the truth that we have. And I pray, oh, Father, that it will not be uh, in vain. And we know that it's not going to return to you void. It will accomplish what it needs to. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Katie. Uh, okay, so this chapter starts off with um, talking about, like, the disappointment uh, in 1844 uh, and what you know, what happened afterward. Um, and so we know from, from the chapter that, you know, there are those who were well-grounded, you know, in their faith, you know, and they studied the word of God and it didn't matter what had happened, whether Jesus came or not, which, you know, we find out that he, he didn't come in that year, but, uh, we see that, you know, there are those who remain strong and still kept, uh, um, their faith and those who, who were easily uh, swayed. Uh, and so I guess to, to start off, well, there's a, I don't know. We have a PowerPoint also. Let's see, um, I'm going to go ahead and just uh, share some of the parts uh, that, you know, I thought was interesting to me. Um, so it says that uh, in, uh, here, it says it involved in doubt and certainty. So there was a lot of people, you know, that were, you know, doubting, you know, whether, you know, uh, grass was going to come or not. Uh, but their, their source of consolation, it says it was uh, still the word of God. So it didn't matter, you know, what, what had happened. And, uh, this reminds me of uh, Sh uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, uh, where you know uh, God, where they said, you know, God's going to deliver us, and you know, and even if He doesn't, like, blessed be the name of the Lord. I think that's a, you know, I, that's that's one thing that I immediately like, you know, remembered is that this is their story. You know, when they were going to be thrown in the furnace, was that whether whether or not God was going to deliver them from that, you know, they were still going to be faithful, and I think that's. Uh, that's, that's like, you know, kind of like the idea that we're getting here, you know, that, you know, to still be, to still be faithful, you know, despite the disappointments. Yeah, I just kind of wanted to piggyback along that. Um, the one principle that really stood out to me, and here's kind of um, a, just the slide on that, is that disappointment, what Damien was talking about, right, we, we know that they had, they had arrived at the wrong date, right? First and foremost, right? They came at, at 1844 and then they came up, I think it was like spring, right? Spring of um, 1844 was their, their initial um, date as to the return of Christ. And, um, but spring had passed, summer had arrived and they still um, were, Christ had not returned. Um, but that didn't sway them, that didn't um, stop them from studying and from continuing to search out. So Damien had mentioned um, that te that passage in the, the first part of the, of the chapter where it says the source of consolation was still the word of God. Um, and I thought that was so powerful and that despite, you know, all, despite their disappointment, despite, you know, because I mean, it, it was bitter, right? You have all this faith, you're preaching, you invest so much into 
you know, this belief that God is going to come on this particular day or at this particular, you know, moment. And it, it didn't, it didn't take place. It didn't come to pass, but that didn't stop them from studying. And many continued to search the scriptures, examining anew the evidences of their faith and carefully studying the prophecies to obtain for the light. She continues the special blessing of the Lord. And I think this is so powerful, both in the conversion of sinners and the revival of spiritual life among Christians had testified that the message was of heaven. So even though they weren't exactly right in the date or in us, in, in the, like in the, I guess in the message per se, uh, the, and we'll, we'll talk about it as we kind of progress along, but um, we can still see that that message was still from heaven. And though the believers could not explain their disappointment, they still felt assurance that God had led them in their past experience. Um, and so that's kind of like a message to us not to stop studying the scriptures we might go through disappointment and, um, and discouragement. And the question I want to ask you guys that we can kind of start to dialogue and, and come up for discussion is why did the early Adventists continue to persevere in their study of the scripture? I want to ask what are your thoughts? And so you guys can just go ahead and unmute and then um, just one at a time. Or I don't know how do you... With my Bible studies, we usually like raise our hand. Um, you have that option to raise your hand on Zoom and then you can unmute or I don't know, however you guys perceive is best. Yeah, I believe that it was, uh, they were so convinced of what they had studied previously. You know, the prophecies leading up to then um, were just so clearly um, explained. And it was, it was, it was just, it just made it make sense. So the, the, the study of the scripture being compared with scripture um, just fit, was fitting just right, right, perfectly, you know. And this incremented their faith. And we we also have to remember that there were signs. Remember the falling of the stars in 1933. There was also the um, this uh, Josiah Litch, with, which prophesied the fall of the Ottoman Empire. Um, and... Things like this just incremented their faith, and like you said, you know, the conversion of the of the of, of sinners and just lives being converted or transformed was just a testimony that just incremented their faith in this in 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 this doctrine of the second coming of Christ. And I believe they persevered because they knew, you know, something might you know might have happened that we just probably missed, you know. So. They, they had faith in everything they had believed up till then, and um, they persevered to see what they had probably made a mistake or misunderstood. And then, um, I don't know if you guys are going to quote Habakkuk, uh, the book of Habakkuk, chapter 2. I don't know if you guys are going to quote that. Yeah, yeah. yeah we're going to, yeah, I was going to mention that, but if, I mean, if you want to go ahead. Jump. Four, yeah. One through four, it says, I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and will watch to see what he will say unto me. And well, I, I shall answer when I am reproved. And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables, that he may run that readeth it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright on, in him, but the just shall live by his faith so this this yep. you know, these verses brought a lot of assurance because i was talking to group, group chat with you but i can't yeah uh, no problem it's fine I, but i can't talk right now <laughs> we'll, we can talk later Okay. Yeah. So go for it. Yeah, no, I was just gonna say. Um, so I, after after that, uh, Habakkuk two, uh, verse one through four. Uh, the next paragraph where it says uh, Charles Fitch. I don't know if you guys read that. How we made a prophetic chart, you know, uh, illustrating you know visions of Daniel and Revelation. Um, and it says the publication of this chart was regarded in the fulfillment of the command given by Habakkuk. So, um, but here we see in the next uh, few sentences it says after the disappointment. This scripture appeared very significant. The vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, for uh, wait for it, because it will surely come and it will not tarry. The just shall live by faith. And I think that's I think that's like really really important towards the end of that. You know, 
uh, those verses that Josh was reading, you know, uh, the just shall live by faith, you know, it's um, to still be ready, you know, like not, not to not, you know, waste, waste the time that we have right now because it will come quickly. Mm -hmm. we, we see a tendency of the human mind to put off, you know, the coming of the Lord. And maybe, you know, in the beginning of this uh, whole, even today, in the beginning of this whole virus thing, you know, many people were like, probably like, oh, you know, maybe this is leading to something, you know, and it brought some fear and some expectation, you know, of, of the, especially on those that believe in, in prophetic uh, truth. But as time is going on and, and, you know, things are, you know, dying down, you can see the tendency of the heart is to be like, oh, everything's going to be fine. You know, this was just, you know, just uh, a little scary, you know, everything's going to be fine. We're going to go back to normal. But I, I think God wants us to, to believe just like Noah did when everything was seeming perfectly fine in nature and in, in, in society in his time to believe like he did that there's something that's coming, you know, that the, the 